were to say to me, Richard, you work on lots of TVRs. If I was given the keys to any TVR, what TVR should I ask for? Something to go and have fun in. And I have my top three. If they're all in good mechanical condition, a Vixen of some sort is up there, a Cerbera is up there, and this is up there, a V8S. So I drove a Chimera not long ago uh, on a test drive, uh, it was a car that I put back together. I haven't put this one back together, this is another customer's car, very kindly let me take it out, um, but it's not been in for the chassis work uh, this time. I have put this car back together but it's got a bit of a history this one because I haven't actually done the chassis on it, I haven't refurbished the chassis. This car was already at another garage closer to where the owner lives and had been taken apart by them and then the person who'd taken it apart had left and many years had passed and then all of a sudden they went bust and the receivers were called in and this thing was in bits and we made a journey there with a people carrier, a trailer, a van, we brought it all back to our workshop in bits. We didn't even know if all the bits were with it, and spoiler alert, they weren't. I had to find some. But it's back now. So, I uh, had a Chimera out not long ago, as I say, and I'm taking this V8S on the same route. For no other reason really than I really like V8S's. Is the V8S a good car? Or is it as good a car as a Chimera? No, not even close. The Chimera is better in every way, every which way. It's better built, it's better riding, it's more refined, feels more supple on the road, feels more planted on the road, feels like it's got more grip, feels better insulated, drive position's better, has options like power steering, things like that. There are more of them. They're easier to work on, really. Boots bigger, more room inside. Oh, and they're cheaper. The VAS is not really that cheap, it's, considering it's an S, which is a, a budget version of a TVR when it was new. VASs are quite rare, so if you want one, you're going to have to pay for it. But as you may be able to hear, the VAS has something going for it. Oh, the noise! Now, I've got to be honest, I get a little desensitised, bump alert. I thought we did that better than the Chimera, actually. Um, I get a little desensitised to uh, V8 soundtracks in cars, because I hear them every day. And you do get bored of them. I, I'm much more excited by V10s, straight fives, V12s, V6s, whatever, just something different. All I hear every day is a V8, but I don't get bored of these. Because at the moment, it sounds like a Chinook is flying over. It's a fantastic noise. Bump alert, second one. This is the worst one. This is going to be horrible. Oh my god! Yeah, the suspension on the S is quite basic. Why is that? Well, I'll explain. Uh, yeah, it's basically a semi trailing arm arrangement. Looks very similar to a Reliance Scimitar SS1. Drive shafts here with slightly worn CV joints. And yeah, that's basically the lot. It is all standard Sierra gear, apart from the trailing arm, which is made by TVR, uh, or was made by TVR. I can now refurbish these. I have a jig. Um, and the uh, drive shaft, which is slightly shorter. There's no upper suspension arm. The damper, uh, shock absorber, coil over unit connects straight to this. Later S's had the possibility of adjusting the rear toe angle by putting shims in this joint here, whereas earlier ones don't have that. Now they changed the geometry of the suspension quite a few times as well. So the S was actually TPR's budget car. It was a 
was launched in 1986 really uh, and came with the 2.8 litre Ford Cologne V6 as you would find in a Ford Capri 2.8 or a Sierra XR4 that kind of thing. Uh, it was replaced by the S2 which had a 2.9 litre Ford Cologne V6 that was found in the Ford Sierra XR4 by 4 and uh, Scorpio and things like that and then there were a few more incarnations of that before the VAS came along. The VAS is what the name suggests, it is an S-series with a V8 engine. The TVR didn't bring out the V8S and then replace it with the Griffin. It might look like that on paper, but that isn't how it went down. What actually happened was TVR were planning to bring out the Griffith. That was something that had been in plans for some time. And they needed a chassis for it. And the original plan when they came up with the Griffith was to modify the chassis from a TVRS. The chassis from a TVRS, which this is, is a tubular chassis, quite simple compared to the original wedge. It was really designed to be simple, cheap and quick and effective to make. And for that reason, it employed a lot of Ford Sierra parts. Uh, the Griffith does as well, so does the Chimera. But the S went to town on it. And where it didn't employ Ford Sierra parts, it employed Ford, the, its Ford Sierra design parts. So that means that although at the front we have double wishbones, unequal length, like you'll find in most TVRs, at the back it's a semi-trailing arrangement. It's basically trailing arms that are arranged at slight angles. So that as the suspension compresses, it changes the uh, camber and the toe angle to give you more, stability, more stable handling, allegedly. So that's what the S had. The reason the S had that is because the Sierra had that. Because the Sierra had that, it meant you could use Ford Sierra diff, Ford Sierra brakes, hubs, even the drive shafts. I mean, the drive shafts themselves, I think, are the shafts are slightly shorter than the Sierra one, but the CV joints are the same. It is, for all intents and purposes, kind of copy from a Sierra. But the downside of this is the semi-trailing arrangement is not, not brilliant. It's cheap. Now being cheap is fine if you've only got a V6 with at most about 160 odd horsepower. But when you put a V8 into that, things change. What actually happened was TVR designed this chassis for the purposes of using it in the Griffith. And Peter Wheeler had a change of heart. The, uh, oh, Morgan. Once the prototype Griffith had been unveiled at the uh, Earl's Court Motor Show with said modified S chassis, he thought, hmm, that's okay if we've got a 4 litre V8 or 3.9, but if we go to uh, something bigger, that chassis is going to struggle. And he was right, I think it would. I mean, with a 3.9 litre V8, third gear, doing 1700 revs, 30, 50, 60. Yeah, it doesn't have to try very hard. For that reason, TVR came up with a new chassis for the Griffith, which was actually based on the chassis for the race car that was based on the S. That was the Tuscan Racer. Amazing race series and everything, but not a car that was ever used on the road. So, Griffith ended up using a version of that chassis which was productionized uh, and the Chimera as well used it but that left them with a modified S chassis so they thought what should we do with that? Well we'll stick an S body on it and call it a VAS. Why not? TVR sold a few of them, not a huge amount. Uh, I think they must have made about 400. Uh, some of them there were a couple with 4.3s fitted and I've driven one that's been converted um, by the company that is that used to be TVR Power, um, who tuned TVR's engines and built their engines. Uh, I drove a 4.3 litre converted car with a genuine 280 horse, and that was quick. This is quick, to be fair. Uh, again, power-wise, this is the same sort of thing as a Chimera. It's a 3.9-ish, maybe 4 litre, depends on whether you add the 2cc or not. Uh, around about 200 horsepower again, book figure would be more like 240, but it probably isn't. That said, in this it does feel quite eager. This car is standard really. This car has been chipped, 
So I don't know if that makes any difference at all, but I find it doesn't tend to on naturally aspirated older cars. Don't have many variables you can play with, but but down here with a Chimera 4 litre saying, oh, they're not that quick. I mean, they go quite well, but in the grand scheme of things, compared to modern hot hatches, don't even get me started on electric saloons. Uh, you know, it's not going to set the world on fire. Certainly by the standards of the time it was sold, it was a bloody fast car, but, but this was even quicker because this is a good 70 kilos lighter than a Chimera, possibly more than that, and it feels it. This is a much more raw car than a Chimera. There's no power steering, there's no option of power steering in this. And the thing with this car is that although it's got the same kind of power as the Chimera, it's a bit more basic. And because it's a bit more basic, it can't handle it as well. The Chimera kind of just shrugs. If you've got a four litre Chimera, you kind of feel like you've got a little bit left in the tank with the chassis because they well, did versions that had five litres and they are a fair bit quicker. Whereas this is kind of on the edge of what the chassis can handle. It's not to say it gets out of shape badly. I mean, it's, you know, a Chimera is quite a well-planted car. It's quite a, I think it's quite a, I think it's got a car with quite good road holding, if I'm honest. And this does, but only to a point. Bumps upset this. If you hit a bump mid-bend in this, if you're going cross country, this is a difficult car to go fast in because the bumps in the middle of a bend can really upset it. And where it's kind of just on the limit a little bit of what it can handle, that makes it a bit more exciting. Because I mean, obviously, having something that's worse is more fun. Is it really? Yes, they, they fight and they wriggle and they squirm. You put your foot down and you feel it on the edge. It's not, you know, it's not like an AC Cobra or something like that. It's not a Widowmaker, but it's, it's kind of like, it's giving you all the, it's giving you nine tenths of the Widowmaker experience without full on wanting to kill you. It feels like if you wanted to go racing cross country, Wow. This would be a difficult car to do it in, but it doesn't feel like it's full on race car, widow maker kind of character. It's got, it feels like, you know, it does talk to you a bit. It might tell you that you're annoying it. It doesn't give you obvious signs, but it gives you signs. And you have to be a little bit more cautious. And that means you have to drive a little bit slower. And that means, here comes the, uh, the whole point. It's more fun than the Chimera. Because you're more involved. You're doing more. Is that a hedgehog? Oh, baby. And a turd. It's, um, it's more fun than the Chimera. It's more involving than the Chimera. If I stamp on it now, it will just go sideways. And it's raw. I mean, it's got a real lovely raw feel to it, but it's not so raw that you can't use it. It's got carpets. It's got electric windows, which are really slow. But that noise, it's the best sounding V8 TVR. You've got this hump in front of you, which is hilarious, because it feels like a big bulge, and maybe on the camera, it just looks like a big bulge. And it is a big bulge, but it's offset. It's off center, there's a vent at the back of it. Oh, Peugeot 306 Estate. There's a vent at the back of the bulge, but the bulge is offset. It's kind of this way. And you think, well, what the hell is that for? If you look at it from the top, it really is off to one side. It's there because in the Italian market, there was a two litre version of this car with a supercharger. Because cars were taxed heavily on their CC and emissions, it was taken down to two litre, as many cars that are sold in Italy were. Many Alpha V6s, two litre turbos, uh, that kind of thing. You know, a lot of cars, Maserati by turbo was a two litre. It's for a reason. Um, I don't know how many they sold of those. I love oddball engines, so I'm all over that. I am all about a 2 litre V8 with a supercharger, but I imagine it was rubbish. But that bulge is to accommodate the supercharger. All cars got the bulge, despite the fact they probably only made 10 cars with a supercharger. It's 
easier just to have one one mould really, isn't it? To work from. And when you give it a bit of throttle, you can feel the steering with the weight changing. It's more communicative than a Chimera. I wouldn't say it was. I wouldn't say it's. Oh my God! Look at that truck. Feels like Sergeant Wilson's going to jump out of that. It just feels more leery than a Chimera. I don't think it actually is. I expect in a straight line, it's probably the same. You know, if you if you had them head to head, if I get my Chimera on the road, I'll get my 0 to 60 thing out and measure it. But I would imagine they're pretty similar, but this just feels more urgent. It just feels more angry. And that is the key. That's what you want. Because when you're driving on the road in a Chimera, even in a four liter, you sat around doing 60, waiting. This, you're doing 50 and you're having more fun. It's just, because it's just a little bit more raw. And a little bit more, yeah. I do love these cars. I, I've, had, I've never had a V8S. I've had a couple of V6s. I had an S1, a very, very late S1, which actually had an S2 chassis, an S2 wheels, but had a 2.8 litre engine which meant that he actually had in the real world about 135, 140 horsepower. Made it not very quick, but it sounded nice and it was good fun around corners. And I also had an S2, which sounded fantastic. And it was a bit quicker, but the V6s don't have the character this has got. They're nothing like as Larry. People look at them on paper and say, oh, the V8's only got 30 horsepower more or whatever. You know, if you think of it, not on paper think of it in real life 200 horsepower Ford V6 160 okay 40 horsepower it's but it's not about the figure it's about the way it's delivered I can't park in my bags the forestry commissioner doing work that's fine I'm busy I'm at work as well the doors fall off these the headlights are atrocious the door cards are falling off the handles inside don't last very long the original dashboard falls to pieces the gear lever is back by the seat belt. The handbrake is horrendous. I mean, this one's not, because I've fixed this one now, permanently sorted it. But most of them have a handbrake that pulls completely unevenly, pulls the right hand side way before the left hand side. Compromised rear suspension, quite a poor ride. Scuttle shake in a car that doesn't have a monocoque body. I mean, how the hell? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I love these cars and I would quite happily have a VAS. I remember the first time I knew about the VAS was playing Gran, uh, Gran Turismo 2, I think. It was a game where there was, you might correct me on it, but there was, it was a game where they had a lot of TVRs. Uh, TVR showing some computer games are notoriously poor. But one of the Gran Turismo's had a VAS, Griffith, Chimera, Tuscan, Cerbera, I think. Speed 12, it had loads. Oh, there's the Rialto again, look, get a good look. Same sort of colour as the Fox was. It was a game that also had the uh, Citroen Xantia V6 on it. So I spent most of my time driving that. But the only TVR I really wanted in that game was the VAS. I just, I was taken with it straight away. I remember the back of it, I got one that was yellow and I thought, oh, has that got Ford Escort rear lights? And it has, and they've continued to be a bane in my life because the stupid cheap bulb holders are awful. This thing, I've had three different problems with the reverse lights on this. Horrendous. Oh, God. It just, it wants to go. Really eager. Let's, let's do a different test. We've been giving it squirts all day long in like third gear. So I'm in fifth gear. I'm doing 30 miles an hour. Thousand revs. Full throttle. Now. 40. 50. Still haven't got 2,000 revs yet. 60. And 2,200. Not bad, is it? So no S's 
were fitted with power steering, even as an option. The rack is not anything like as quick as a, a Chimera. Um, it's not that heavy, actually. The V6 is worse. I think the V6 engine may actually be heavier because the Cologne is all iron, whereas the Rover V8 is all alloy. But the steering is nicer in the V8 than it is in the V6. The V6 is quite numb. The V8's got a... Do you know it feels a bit sharper? You get a wider track in the V8 as well. Uh, they've got their own type of wishbones, their own type of training arms at the back, and they have discs at the back as well. Most S's have drums. There was a model of S called the S4C, and those are they're the ultimate V6, because what they actually were was V8 chassis, but with a V6 engine. So they had the wider track, they had the discs all round, they had the uh, bespoke front suspension, the wider rear suspension, dashboard. Didn't have the bonnet with the bulge in it, had a smooth one with vents down the side, uh, which was also seen on the S3C. And they're quite nice actually. I mean, it's still got a cologne, which I see as a, a bit of a drawback really, but they do the job, they've got a bit of character. But I wouldn't buy another V6S, but I would definitely have a V8. The dashboard changed as well. Uh, the S1 and the S2 had a, a swoopy wrap round dashboard. My first one had a red version of this, which I actually quite liked. The more time I spend in the later cars, I think I'm starting to warm to these. I, I do quite like this dash, especially this one. I love this shade of green and this two-tone dash with the door cards have inserts which are sort of colour coordinated and he's had the veneer redone this was a right staple we got this car uh, most of this is original the veneer has been done we've done the carpets a while ago uh, they're not an expensive carpet it, you know they're gonna wear but they do the job the original one was quite heavily damaged this dash was refinished at a huge expense it's a work of art it's beautiful and they're an absolute pig to get out as well so incidentally, if you uh, look at the dashboard in a VAS, when you first put the ignition on, the MIL light comes up, the malfunction indicator lamp. In other words, an engine check light. But that comes on. It's nothing to do with the ECU, that's, uh, that's the oil pressure warning light. Because it doesn't have one, so they use that instead. Great. Mazda MX-5 went the other way just now, and it's not much smaller than this. This is a light car, this is under a tonne, you're probably looking at about 970 kilos, I would guess, curb weight on this, I haven't weighed one yet, I will do one day. So the power to weight is going to be a good 220 horsepower per tonne, but again, that's just the number, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean, that's not the whole story, you can get bogged down in horsepower figures, people who own these cars go, oh no, it's definitely more than that, it feels much more than that, and they get all upset if you say their cars don't have the full power but it's not about the, the headline figure. Because this car, even if it only had 200 horsepower, say it was peaking that at 5,000 revs, at 4,000 revs it's probably pushing 180, and at 3,000 maybe 160. So it's got quite a broad power band, whereas something that's revy and peaky gives you high figures. It might be doing 200 horsepower at 6,000 revs, but at 5,000 revs, it might be down at 150. It's an exaggeration, but that's how it kind of works. And if the actual figure itself, the peak figure, is not what it's all about. And this car subscribes to my mantra on TVRs even more than the Chimera does. It's not how fast it goes, it's how it goes fast. This is an absolute riot. Dare I say it, it's more fun than a Griff as well. It's more fun than a Griffith. Again, I mean, even if you get a powerful Griffith, the best Griffith you'll find, or the most fun Griffith you can you can find, is a 4.3 big valve, genuine one. They only made about 25, so good luck. But the most, a lot of the 430s are also good fun, and you can have them rebuilt to big valve spec. But even so, there's something about this. Mechanically, very similar to a Chimera and Griffith in many ways, but it isn't the same chassis. There's this myth that the VAS is a, a Chimera or Griffith in an S body. That is not the case. 
it is a very much an S in an S body. It's just a version of the chassis that was going to be used for the Griffith and then would have been used for the Chimera, but wasn't. Rightfully so, I think. But mechanically, there are a lot of similarities. The gearbox in this car, Rover's LT77, familiar to anyone who's driven an SD1, or even a Land Rover. Uh, reverse is over to the left and up, unlike the T5, where it comes over and down. T5 was never fitted in these cars, I'm sure some people have modified them, and that would make it even better. Um, this is not too bad, the gearbox in this, but it's, it's not the best. It's heavy as well, the LT. The T5 is a much lighter unit. The V8S also had a limited slip diff that the normal S's didn't get, obviously, S4 aside, because it was mechanically the same as this. But the diff isn't the same kind of level of limited slip diff that the Griffith and Chimera had. It's actually a Sierra diff, uh, taken from a Sierra XR 4x4. 3.64 ratio, uh, limited slip diff, but of course being a Sierra diff, it is a viscous diff, mm. which means it is kind of unpredictable. It's like having a torque converter between the rear wheels. And sometimes, in some cars, it locks up eagerly, and in other cars, it doesn't. My, I mean, to be fair, my S1, I put a limited slip diff in that, but I don't think it had enough power to engage it. This, this definitely does. In fact, I'd quite like to buy one of these and drive it in the wet so it could just go sideways. But yeah, there we go, the TVR V8S. I wholly recommend one, I really do. Uh, if you want a TVR that is not so great in all the way that people say TVRs are not so great, i.e. build quality, and um, wiring on these cars is atrocious. It's the worst, one of the worst TVRs I've seen. I mean, the wedges are not good. But the wiring on this is appalling. Um, you know, it really you could do it. You could do it better yourself. But if you want a car that is raw, very characterful, exciting, but not crazy. It's not bare metal floors in here and everything like that. It's uh, it's a normal car. You can use it. I don't think it'd be as good a Tourer. Well, I can tell you for a fact, it's not as good a Tourer as a Chimera. But. That's, well, it's not really a fact, is it? That's that's still subjective. But no, it's not as good at touring as a Chimera. But it, you could still tour in it. Uh, if I had the roof off, I'd be having oral pleasure at the moment. Oral, a u r a l, pleasure. Um, but the microphone would not. The microphone would have an aneurysm. So we can't be doing that. Anyway, that's about it. Nice little test drive out in a TVR V8S. Thank you very much to the owner. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will answer them if I see them. I cannot guarantee I will. <laughs>